G'day, Michael here. This video is about how to make a very clear uh, image from a very poor source image. Now I'm using the same photo in this uh, video as I did in the previous video, this one. And I produce not this, which is what I did in the last video, which is quite a faithful reproduction, but instead a um, manipulated image which allows us to see a lot more detail around the car. You can see there's a great deal of detail available. Okay. Now when I compare that to the original colour image, there isn't that much detail available. And what I did in the previous video, if you want to go back and watch how I achieved it, this is what I achieved, which is quite a faithful reproduction of the photo using the laser engraving versus today's video, which is a strongly manipulated image using what's called HDR, or High Dynamic Range. Okay, so I'll show you how that's actually done. I'm going to open this photo with GIF. Just move that to the other side. Now this is going to be largely a copy of the first video that I've done, but you will also see only one minor difference. First we have to do, we do have to change the scale. Now my final print job is 200 millimeters high, right? So we must leave this area here locked so we scale it proportionately. I'm going to disregard the pixels per inch because we're going to control the size later. Um, what I want here is 200 millimeters but I'm going to do it in 0.2 of a millimetre steps. So I'll go to scale. There's no point having the photo any larger than what the laser resolution final output is going to be because it produces strange harmonics and you certainly don't maintain absolute control here in our photo editor. I'm aiming to keep everything here on our uh, design computer so that the laser produces a faithful copy of what we decide here rather than taking it to say RD Works or whatever your software is on the laser and letting it control the output. So we're taking full control here of what happens. Now, uh, where are we? Colors Retinex. Very handy tool. This is a HDR tool that's just on tap ready to go on GIMP. Now, I'll just enlarge that slightly. Where am I? There. Okay, now, we can, what I found works rather well, I mean, you can play with these, this is always going to be perceptual based on the, um, the photo at hand. So I'm going to just do some tweaks to show you. We slide this down, wait for it to re review. Nothing very good there. Go the other way, what happens? Make di big changes to see what the effect is. So you can see that's created some strange over the top amounts. That's gone black. Let's get back to something sane. What we're interested in is this high contrast area here. Can we zoom in on that, maybe? There we go. As you can see, that's already changed from the original to that. It's quite a big difference. Now, Like I said, it is perceptual. So you can simply play with it until you see the contrast. I might zoom out so I see the whole picture again. Because it is important to see whatever's happening around the rest of the place. Okay, so this is pumping out the absolute range, like the scale of the whole thing. Now you can see that has produced a very well pumped image. You can see there's a lot of detail here and all of a sudden we're seeing the reflections. But again, this is up to you to see what works well for the photo. And I would simply play with that. 
if you overcook it well see that can work too um, yeah depends what you want to see so I'll zoom out to see what it does to the whole image and you can see we've got a lot of artifact here from sort of over the top glowing effect here I might just um, turn it down a tad so see that's a little bit too alien so you do a balancing act of what you think will work well with your photo I actually really overcooked th this one for that, that uh, sample that I showed you Okay, now I'll just zoom in on that to make sure the car is good yes there you can see that's pretty much what I had produced to get that engraving that you saw so I'm going to go okay but you can see all of a sudden the lady's face is quite visible there's a lot of bugs and whatnot and reflections off the windscreen and there's a glint but you can see the man's photos uh, man's face is pretty good and we've got a lot of detail here but you can see it's it, if you wanted to print this photo it would actually be um, as in printed as a photo print it would be overcooked you couldn't get away with this but I'm going to go okay here because our laser does not have the ability to produce all the strange auras and things it simply works with you know it's black or it's white so I've already got this thing set to the right scale We've tweaked the contrasts using the Retinex tool. I'll have to zoom out a tad so we see the whole picture. Now our job is to convert it to one bit. Now I noticed some machines seem to be able to use like a two bit, which is four colors. In any case, uh, image, mode, indexed. If you need four colors, you can specify that here. But we're going to use one bit because I want to maintain absolute control. And the uh, dithering method I used was positioned. I'll show you what Floyd Steinberg does on this. Convert. So we zoom in. And you can see this is the kind of dithering it does. It, it has its advantages and its disadvantages. I feel that the order works better for me. It seems to be um, seems to be better. But basically, because we've already changed the resolution to what our laser can produce, we are seeing very close to what the laser will physically produce. And you can see the lady's face is pretty clear. The man's face is obviously lost. But we've got the reflection of the road. We've got the grill. We've got the number plate. There's quite a lot of detail. You can see the detail on the bridge in the background. Even cars in the background. That sign there is illegible, but you can recognise that it's there. And the grass is fairly well represented. Now if I undo that, and change to the ordered indexed we're going to use one bit, we're going to change the method to position I think that kind of looks sweeter there's this you know, it, it does, I mean that's my eye I think the order produces like a screen print top effect more so that's kind of a screened effect which is fine uh, I mean feel free to do what you want to do but you can see that has produced solid contrast on that sign. This is all good. Um, the other thing that's worth noting, it's important, if you've particularly got large areas, to not have absolute white. It's important to have a little bit of black in any white area and a little bit of white in any black area. Now this area here is you know, pushing it to the limit. This is a terrible photo as far as contrasts, but I think what we've got here is now a very viable type of uh, image. Now what I'll do is I'll save that and like to export it from GIMP and I'm just going to call it um, car HDR and set what is the size of this thing? A thousand pixels so I'm just giving it a thousand high. I like to eliminate spaces by using the underscores between the words it's just safer when you're going across different systems. Um, and if you do any script work, spaces may indicate a break in a command, whereas underscore indicates that we have in fact got the same file name. Okay, so export. It's gonna ask quality, yada yada. Won't be much quality lost. I'm gonna move GIMP out of the road. Now let's just see what RDWorks will do with that. Is open and this is important lock 
use the lock. Do not press the delete key. You can use backspace, you use arrows, but if you press delete, you'll delete the photo. So I'm going to type in a 200 high. So now if I zoom out, that is the correct size for what the laser will produce. And you place it on your table wherever you want. And of course, set your power settings, etc., whatever you need to do for your machine, and you're good to go. Right, so that was basically that process there. Well, I hope that was of interest to you, and I hope you're happy with these lies. Um, <laughs> it's important to understand a photo is perceptual. Um, we're going to be doing a photo shoot of this very same rally every two years it occurs. Um, so we'll be taking a few thousand photos, and hopefully we can sell a few of these um, engraved into some plywood. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, hopefully this can help you doing whatever you do, and uh, maybe you make a business out of it. Well, feel free to, to like, share, subscribe, make a comment, um, ask a question, make a donation, oh, a suggestion for a new video. Go ahead, make my day. <laughs> Bye for now.